Hi friends, in this video we're going to talk about an introduction to Elasticsearch database and some important terminology. I've also written a blog post covering the whole content of this video. So be sure to check out this blog post. I will leave the link of this blog post in the description. So what is Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch is basically a distributed database where data is stored as JSON documents. When you say distributed database, that means the database can run in multiple nodes at a time. So in this example, you have an Elasticsearch cluster running in four nodes. That means the Elasticsearch database is running in four servers. So the data is distributed here and you can even have replication and you can even add more nodes in the future. So this database is horizontally scalable. You know, we said Elasticsearch can store data as documents or JSON documents. So a JSON document is the fundamental unit of data in an Elasticsearch database. It's like a row in a database table. So for example, a JSON document can be something like this, a person's biodata like name, location, age, email. All right, let's try to compare Elasticsearch database to a relational database like Postgres or Oracle. So in a relational database, you'll have something like a database table where you have rows in it. For example, I have an employee database table here and it has columns, name, location, age, email. So to store the data of three employees, I'm creating three rows in this database table. Now let's try to do this in Elasticsearch. In Elasticsearch, you have something called an index. So index is something like a database table. So index is a group of documents. So a document is something like a database row. So to implement the employee table in Elasticsearch, you create an employee index and you insert all the employees data as JSON documents. So here the first employee data is stored in this first JSON, the second employee data is stored in the second JSON and the third employee data is in this JSON. So the collection of these three JSONs is an index and it's something like a database table. So this is how data is stored in an Elasticsearch database. All right, why should we use Elasticsearch database? One reason is it's distributed database and it's horizontally scalable, which is not possible with a relational database. And another thing is Elasticsearch is designed for faster queries. Literally, the data is stored as queries in an Elasticsearch database. That is the reason why the queries are really fast, even with huge amounts of data in Elasticsearch database. So Elasticsearch database uses a data structure called inverted index. Let's try to demonstrate with simple examples here. I have a table where I have eight documents and let's think there is an attribute called geoscope ID in that eight documents. So if you want to search for Europe, you will go through all these documents or you will create some kind of index and you will search to get one, two and seven or the document IDs which contain the word Europe. But in Elasticsearch, it stored something like this. The data is stored as search. So it will say Europe is present in these three documents. France is present in this document. And when a search query comes, where is Europe? Instantaneously, you can say that it's in these documents. Let's try to see another example. Suppose there are these three documents in an index where you have words. First, Elasticsearch tokenizes them. That means it will try to find the unique words and then store them like this. In an index, it will say the word called B is present in these three documents and it occurs with this frequency and is present at this location. For example, the word B is present in the first document and it comes two times. You can see B is occurring two times here and it's present at the second and sixth position. So B is the second and sixth word here. The same way in the second document, it occurs only once and it is the second word. So the position is second. So this way, the data is saved as search. So if you want to search the occurrence of the word B in these documents, it's literally stored as a search here. And that's why you will get faster queries in Elasticsearch. So in short, Elasticsearch uses a data structure called inverted index. And it is the reason why Elasticsearch is fast. All right, now let's get to the important terminologies. What is a node? The server running an Elasticsearch instance is called a node. In this example, there are four nodes in this cluster. That means there are four servers running Elasticsearch in this cluster. And then what is an index? Index is basically a group of documents in an Elasticsearch database. So in this example, there's this index called employee index and it contains group of documents. And now let's cover what is a shard. A shard is a leucine index. You know, index is actually a logical term. Physically, index is implemented as a group of one or more shards. So a shard is like an independent Elasticsearch index. 
and shards is the reason why Elasticsearch can implement this high availability and redundancy. Let's say you configure that an index will have three shards and you have two nodes in the Elasticsearch cluster. Now Elasticsearch will rebalance these shards so that they are distributed among the nodes. And now suppose you get a data query to this Elasticsearch cluster, two nodes can work on the query and provide data. So using multiple shards in multiple nodes, you can achieve parallel queries. So the number of shards in an index can be configurable. You can even have one shard in an index. So there are two types of shards, primary and replicas. Replica shards are read-only shards which are useful for serving parallel data queries. And now let's talk about an index template. Index template is like a blueprint for creating an index. So an index can be created from an index template. And this index template will contain all the settings like the number of shards, the data mapping, the priority of the index, etc. Let's see this example here. Using this command, we are creating an index template called template1. And here we are mentioning all the settings like the number of shards, the data mappings, aliases, priority, etc. Now let's talk about the data mapping. If you see the index template, we are telling that there is a field called host name in the index and it's of type keyword. And we are telling that there is a attribute called created it and it's of type date. So using the index data mapping, we are able to specify the schema of the index. We can also set the index data mapping to be dynamic. That means Elasticsearch initially doesn't know what is the schema, but as the documents arrive into the database, it will try to realize what is the schema and it will update the index schema. Suppose you say the schema is dynamic and insert this document, then Elasticsearch will figure out that name is of type string, location is of type string, age is of type number, email is of type string, etc. And suppose in the next document, you give age as a string instead of number, then Elasticsearch will think that age is a composite data type which can be a number or a string. So this is called schema on write. So by keeping the index data mapping as dynamic, Elasticsearch will figure out the index schema upon write. On the contrary, you can even set the index data mapping to be strict. That means just like an RDBMS table, like an Oracle table, you can specify that age should always be a number. And if a document comes where age is a string, it will be rejected because it's not complying to the strict schema. So index data mapping is how you can specify the schema of the documents in an index. So in short, index template is a blueprint which contains the settings of the index while creating the index. All right. Let's go to the another topic which is index alias in Elasticsearch. Let's take a scenario where you have three indexes, something like this, logs-1, logs-2, logs-3. And you want to search data in these three indexes. So how are you going to do this? You have to search for the data in these three indexes individually. So to avoid this, there is something called alias. So this is a command to create alias. And this alias includes all the indexes following this pattern logs-star. That means all the indexes starting with logs dash will be under this alias. So now I have defined a logs alias where all the indexes starting with logs dash will be present. So I am covering all these three indexes in this logs alias. So I can do query directly to this logs alias and the query will be done on these three indexes at a time. So alias is basically grouping of Elasticsearch indices. And here we have mentioned another concept called write index. So in an alias, if an index is marked to be write index, then only you can insert data. This concept of creating single write index and rolling over the indexes is useful when you have huge data incoming daily in real time and your index is growing and you need to split your indices as the data grows. So this is called index lifecycle management and we'll talk about it in the future videos. But for now, alias is a group of indices and you can query group of indices directly using index alias. And to write data into alias, the index should be marked as a write index. If the index is not marked as a write index, the alias can't write data into that index. All right, the next terminology is data streams. So data streams is a relatively new concept in Elasticsearch. It's basically designed for the up and only time series data. So for example, if you define a data stream called logs, you can insert data into the data stream and in the backend, data stream creates a backing index, something like this, and fills data into this. In the data stream settings, you define the threshold age or size for rollover. Once the threshold of the life cycle is reached, a new index is created and data will be written into this new index. And if this index is full or a threshold is met, another index will be created. So this way, 
data stream creates an abstraction over a set of indices and new indices will be created as the data fills in. One more thing to note about data stream is that you can't directly insert data into the backing index. You need to insert data into the data stream only. It will insert data into the index. And there will be only one write index in the data stream. All the previous indices will be marked as read only. So that is about data stream. You can use a data stream where you have time series data and Elasticsearch takes care of splitting the data into individual indexes so that your data will be divided and you can exploit the parallelism of Elasticsearch. So managing time series data and managing the index life cycle or another concepts, we will try to cover that in the future videos. So that's it guys. This is the Elasticsearch database introduction and terminology. So we have covered what is an index and the analogy to a relational database, what are nodes, indices, shards, and what is an index template and what is an index alias and what is a data stream in Elasticsearch. So these are some of the important terminologies to get started with Elasticsearch. In our next videos, we'll try to understand how to roll over indices automatically based upon age or size using index lifecycle management. So that's it guys. You can see I've created a blog post on Elasticsearch database introduction and terminology. I've also given the notes and diagrams so that you can understand easily. I've also given links to some references so that you can do further understanding and dive deep into Elasticsearch concepts. So that's guys, that's an introduction to Elasticsearch. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.